Hello YouTube. Today in the Nighty Librarian, I am bringing you my mid-July wrap-up. All right, I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> I am flopping so hard in July. Like I have been going through it, okay? I've just been having a really rough month and I'm not getting any reading done. Well, I got books read. I read some books, but I'm just flopping real hardcore and I'm just a mess. I, I worked a very long day at work. I came home, I ate like a lot of food, like too much food. So I'm very full and I'm discombobulated. Let's talk about books. <laughs> First category is romance and I read two of those. You know what, let's start things off right because I read Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. I gave it five stars. I loved it to bits. It like saved my life because I was in such a reading slump and I was like, I hate reading. I hate books. Like I was in such a slump for many reasons that we will get into later. So I saw this and I was like, you know what? That looks gosh darn delightful. Let's just see what happens. And like immediately chapter one, laughing out loud funny. Like, like laughs came out of my mouth. It wasn't just me smiling in my head and like laughing inside. No, like laughs came out of my mouth. <laughs> I loved it so much. It was like exactly what I needed. This is a rom-com. It has Georgie and Travis. Uh, Georgie is basically kind of the youngest child, so no one really takes her seriously. She's also um, the town clown. She is a clown for children's birthday parties. <laughs> so, you know, that's not really a sexy profession. Let's be real. And then you have Travis, who is her older brother's friend, who actually was a professional baseball player, but an injury ended his career early. So Georgie has always been in love with Travis. You know how this rom-com story goes. And um, eventually Travis and her kind of become friends. And then we get into the wacky hijinks of fake dating. For Georgie, the fake dating is going to make her seem desirable and as a grown-up and people will take her more seriously. And then you have Travis who is really trying to reform his bad boy image so he can get a new job in baseball, not playing but commentating. So they're both kind of like in this advantageous relationship with each other that they're getting things they need and want out of it, including sexy times. <laughs> like let's just talk about the smut. Why not? It's there, obviously. It's a rom-com. There's gonna be smut. Before I started reading this, the one thing I kept hearing about it was that it was smutty. And I was like, ooh, it's gonna be smutty. <laughs> I was really excited. And it is, it's fairly smutty. I'd say that. Um, I've read smuttier, but it is fairly smutty. I will say that. And it's like good smut. Cause like, it's like, dirty sex, but like the good kind. <laughs> if you get what I mean, it's excellent. I enjoyed it. 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> so yeah, I don't really know what else to say. It's laugh out loud funny. It's swoony. It's a romance. And I kind of like that it wasn't that situation where the guy is like an asshole and like was really genuinely cruel to the heroine and she like just forgives him. We didn't really have that situation happen here and I think it could have gone that direction. The narrative lends itself to going that way and it didn't, which was definitely a narrative choice and I appreciated that quite a bit because while Travis is a grumpy dude, he's a grump and a half and he's gruff and he might not be like the nicest all the time, he never is like cruel you know what I mean there's a lot of books where the men's behavior is just cruel and I don't think they should be together because fuck that guy but this one I'm like no he's just grumpy like he doesn't do anything that's so unforgivable <laughs> like I was like into it I'm like, I can I can handle grumps anyway it's funny it's sexy it's adorable it's got swoons it's got romance it's a rom-com you know it's it follows the rom-com formula, but it's an excellently done one. I very much enjoyed this. I recommend if you need to get out of funk, if you want to laugh, if you want to read about dirty hot sex, <laughs> this is your jam. This is the one. The other romance I read was The Bride Test by Helen Wong. This was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. It's kind of an unofficial sequel to The Kiss Quotient, her other book, because I th feel like it's more of an episodic series, so if you didn't read The Kiss Quotient, you could read this and it'd be fine. I really enjoyed it because it's a very 
diverse romance. This features characters who are Vietnamese and from Vietnam in particular, and you also have uh, neurodivergent characters because our male lead, Kai, is actually on the spectrum. He has autism. And it's interesting seeing his responses to the situations because how a person who's not on the autism spectrum would respond is very different. And I do believe it is own voices because I believe Helen Wong is on the spectrum as well, so she has expert knowledge on these kind of reactions and how that would work. So I trust her to tell that story. And it actually comes across really sensitive and interesting because you really root for Kai. You know he's feeling very deeply, but he doesn't understand his feelings, essentially. So she paints this really great picture where you know how he feels before he does. And I love that. And then you have Esme, who is the love interest. It's kind of a little bit of a mail order bride situation. Uh, <laughs> basically, his mom goes to Vietnam to try to find him a wife because Kai is not doing well on his own. And she meets Esme and she loves Esme. She's like, oh, you're perfect. Come meet my son in America, I'll buy you a ticket. Which sounds very like, oh, I'm about to be murdered in a million different ways. <laughs> Luckily, it works out and she goes to America and basically she has a summer to seduce Kai. So he will marry her, she gets a green card, she can bring her family over. So she has like a lot of eggs in this basket, so to speak. And she's working with a guy who, you know, doesn't necessarily have all the tools to understand this relationship. But it is really adorable because he learns along the way because he does genuinely want to please her and he has to learn how that goes because he doesn't understand really. But he really tries. I, I like He's like the little engine that could. <laughs> I love him. He tries so hard. <laughs> hey, how's the smut? I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about that for a minute. Is it as smutty as the kiss quotient? I would say no because the kiss quotient is gender swapped pretty woman so it's gonna be very smutty this one has like a decent amount of smut it's not as smutty as the other one but it's, it's good smut i appreciated it it was fun to read and you know i didn't think it was quite necessarily as funny as it could have been but i don't think it was going necessarily for funny it's more of just like a sweet book and i really appreciated seeing these characters who are very different and unique and not like all the other characters you get in so many romances. So this is a very unique book in the genre and I loved it for that reason. It's swoony, it's smutty, it's got great characters, it's an interesting story. Love it to bits. Totally recommend. I think I gave it 4.5 stars. Next category is fantasy and I read three of those. Hopefully this isn't like a big shiny death ball. <laughs> this is Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly. I gave it four out of five stars. I did really enjoy this actually. I was, I came in reserved because I'm like, it might not translate well. I was worried. I'll admit it. But I did think it actually translated very well. This is a um, retelling of the Cinderella story, except this is told from the perspective of one of the ugly stepsisters. So it's a very different take on this story. And they're going back to like grim fairy tale where like they had to cut off parts of their feet to fit in that shoe. So it, it starts in a dark place. <laughs> and we are following Isabel, who is the ugly stepsister. And it's kind of, um, it's a much more feminist retelling just from that perspective alone because this isn't the girl that everyone sees as pure and sweet and pretty and that's why she gets the prince and you know she's kind and good at heart she's a much more realistic woman like you know she's not necessarily kind and pure of spirit she's kind of like sarcastic and a little bit of an asshole sometimes but she has a good heart you know and she might not be the prettiest woman in the room let's be real there's worse things you could be than not the prettiest woman in the room so it's a much more layered take on the situation because she grew up around Cinderella, who even though if they treated her dirty, she's covered in ashes, everybody falls in love with her the second they meet her because she's so pretty. So I can understand where the resentment comes from. It's exploring this in a much more intricate way that's more from the female perspective rather than a dude writing this story. So it really comes across like that and I enjoyed it. 
Also, it feels like it's its own fairy tale. Basic gist of the story is that there is a wager going on here between fate and chance. These are two like, you know, the metaphysical embodiments of these ideas. So there's like the fates, you know, from like Greek mythology, there's the crone, and then you have chance who's like this ne'er-do-well, rake with a heart of gold character. And they're both fighting over Isabel's destiny. Will she take a chance and change her destiny or will she be stuck on fate's predetermined path? So it's a very much an interesting fairy tale take on this story that like very different from the original story and also just as interesting. Like I found it like such a cool fairy tale story. I know I keep saying it's a fairy tale, but it's hard to write a new fairy tale that feels like, oh, I wish this was in like Grimm's fairy tales. Like it feels like that, you know what I mean? has all the characteristics but for a modern audience so it's a modern fairy tale I'll say. The reason I gave it four and not five stars is that the, the perspective changed kind of randomly every once in a while because it is a fairy tale so you feel like you're being told the fairy tale as you're reading it but it's also like in third person and then it kind of switches to second person a little bit and like it, it just kind of happens all of a sudden like you're talk like it's about Isabel 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 and then all of a sudden the text starts talking to you the reader and you're like what wait what <laughs> so that kept throwing me off and it felt like weird I didn't enjoy it I get it it just felt heavy-handed like when she has to make the point she's trying to make in the fairy tale like the moral of the story sections she starts talking to the reader directly so it turns into like more of a you type you know, second person rather than the third person, which was odd. <laughs> so that's why I gave it four stars because it was an odd literary choice. But other than that, I, I enjoy this quite a bit. I do recommend it. I think it's worth the read. It's very short. I think it's a little over 300 pages. It's like, yeah, it's like 330 something pages. It's a quick read and it's genuinely pretty fun. It's a nice fairy tale. It's like bloody and gory sometimes. And also it's very fascinating. I love it. I love it. I love it read it go go read it <laughs> words just left me i just started saying like one word sentences because that's my life this month Ooh. the next fantasy i read was the red scrolls of magic by cassandra claire and wesley chu this is kind of going back in time in the shadow hunters universe because these books are supposed to happen between books three and four of the Mortal Instruments series. But I, I still want to read it because I genuinely love Magnus Bane. He's like my favorite character of the Mortal Instruments series in particular. He is a warlock with a penchant for glitter. <laughs> he's a, you know, and he's pansexual, he's wild, he's seen a lot of shit, and he's just kind of like interesting and snarky, and I, and I love him to bits. He's a great character. And he kind of has like an odd couple situation with Alec Lightwood, who is a shadow hunter. And very much, he's like the Captain America of shadow hunters. He's such a boy scout. And like, their dynamic is so opposite that like it works. <laughs> and, I, and I really enjoy their relationship dynamic. I love it. And it's just, yeah, it's just a shadow hunter story. It's exactly what you think it's going to be, except it's without all the characters who really pissed me off. <laughs> That's my biggest problem with the Mortal Instruments series is that like I hated Clary. I hated her with like passion, like a lot. <laughs> I, hate, I hate her. So this is a story in that universe where she's not in it at all. Yes. <laughs> and I realize how much I like this series without Clary. <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about this book in particular. This is Alec and Magnus and they are on a trip throughout Europe. They're on a vacation together. They've just declared their love for each other in front of everybody. So they're like, oh, let's go explore our relationship on this trip and have romance and stuff. And you know, because it is a shadow hunter's world, things go awry <laughs> because there is this cult that's up to no good, which apparently Magnus Bane started a long time ago as a joke. So geez, he's got to deal with this because he's in a lot of trouble because his cult is causing some shit to go down. But Magnus doesn't remember it. He's like, I have no recollection of this time period. I know I started it, but I have no recollection of what happened. So it's kind of a mystery story. They have to solve it. They have to find clues figure out what the F is going on. Let's fix it. Let's shut that shit down because shit's getting weird. 
and along the way they are trying to have a romantic vacation and explore their relationship and they get cock blocked so much <laughs> i'm sorry like i was going through a rough week and i was just like just let them bang already. Like it was hurting my feelings. I'm like, just let a bone. Every time they're about to, like a demon attacks them. And like, what a way to get cock blocked, am I right? <laughs> I'm sorry, this isn't the first glass of wine I've drank today. <laughs> but it, you know, it, it might not be the last, who knows? Yeah, I, I just wanted them to be able to bone. P.S. Slight spoiler alert, they end up doing it. And I was very proud of them. But that that's neither here nor there. Did I enjoy this? Yes, I did. I gave it, uh, I think I gave it four stars because it's not the best thing I've ever read, but I did enjoy it, which is much higher than I gave all of the early books of the uh, Mortal Instruments series. Those in Hit Pass 3. So <laughs> yeah, this one already knocking it out of the park. I very much enjoyed it. I think I would read the next book of this series. I think there's supposed to be a trilogy here. I'd read the next book. I'm very fascinated in the relationship. I wanted to see it develop and then be cute and also fight crime. Well, demon crime. It's gonna be great. I'm so into it. The last fantasy book I read was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I was so into this. I was living for it. Basic just the story here. There are librarians who are badasses. They carry swords because the books they look after are grimoires. Grimoires are like magical spell books. Some grimoires are filled with happy light magic so they're probably okay to deal with but some grimoires are filled with really dark magic and sometimes they literally turn into monsters and go on a rampage and murder people so <laughs> being a librarian's a rough job in this one we are following elizabeth who is a novice librarian she's been training her whole life to be a librarian and shit goes sideways. She ends up in this uh, alliance with Nathaniel. Nathaniel is a sorcerer. Now, librarians and sorcerers, they don't necessarily get along. Basically, librarians feel like sorcerers are evil and sorcerers are like, hey, let's have a good time. <laughs> so they're not doing a lot to dispel the rumors. So Elizabeth, Nathaniel, she doesn't trust him. It's kind of a know if it's an enemies to lovers romance it's more of like I'm terrified of you oh wait you're nice <laughs> kind of story and this is a standalone so it's one and done you don't have to wait for the next book to come out she and Nathaniel are trying to you know obviously solve a mystery because that's what fantasies are you have to solve some shit that's going on basically someone's attacking libraries and trying to steal like grimoires to set off a, a magical fuck wave that's gonna be terrible essentially well maybe not a fuck wave that makes it sound different than it actually is i just mean it's going to mess stuff up <laughs> like it's gonna be bad so elizabeth nathaniel they team up they're gonna stop this from going down now i was really into reading this because i genuinely enjoyed margaret rogerson's previous book in enchantment of ravens so i wanted to see more of that snarky humor and i feel like it did translate well here. I didn't think it was snarky enough. Like I felt like Enchantment of Ravens just had more snark in it. So I do like that one slightly better than I liked Sorcery of Thorns, but it still had that snarky charm I liked. And then I started wondering why I was expecting Enchantment of Ravens again, because this is a completely different book and a completely different world, completely different characters. And then I realized, oh my gosh, Margaret Rogerson wrote two fantasy books and both books are not alike at all. She wrote two completely different stories, which is so rare when you think about it. Like think about other authors who write multiple series. Chances are the series are fairly similar. Am I right? Like um, Sarah J. Maas, for example, you have the Throne of Glass series, you have the Court of whatever series, they're somewhat similar. They both take place in the Fey world. Selena and Feyre, they're, they're similar characters a little bit. So she kind of writes the same situations over and over again, but that's not anything against Sarah J. Maas. That's a lot of different authors. They kind of keep rewriting the one thing they're really good at. In this case, she wrote two completely different stories, completely different characters. I don't see similarities between the two books besides like the snarky humor. So I found that very fascinating and I got mad at myself for trying to expect something that this book isn't. 
I was expecting the last book. I shouldn't have expected that. So as I reframed like my thought process around it, I really genuinely enjoyed this. One last thing about this book, there are demons in it. But in particular, we deal with a demon named Silas, who is great. <laughs> Lack of a better word. There are so many funny bits that are just like deadpan humor that you just have to read. <laughs> they're always involving Silas and they're always great. Oh my goodness, I love it. I wish there was another book in this world, but I know it's a standalone, but I would read another book just about Silas. He is so dope. I loved him. So yes, I gave this, I don't remember what I gave it. I think it 4.5 stars, definitely. I genuinely really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun, interesting, unique story. And it has badass librarians. Like, that's all you really needed to tell me and I would have wanted to read it. The last section is books I screwed up with and there's two of them. <laughs> okay, so I officially read five books, which is fewer books than I normally read because I tried reading two more and like I failed <laughs> so much. I didn't finish either of them for different reasons. We'll get into that. But since I did put in an effort to try to read these books, I want to talk about them briefly, although I can't really give them my full review because I have not finished them. Let's go. The first book I flopped on was Candle and the Flame by Nafisa Azad. <sighs> like, I want to read this. <laughs> I love the cover. I love, like, the premise. I think it'd be good, genuinely. But I only got to chapter six, and I just stopped reading. And I wanted to continue reading, but I, like, I couldn't put up the effort because <laughs> I've been... Like I said, I've been going through it this month. Like, I don't have time to read. And this is one of those books that I'm like, I hate books. Why do I have to read them? <laughs> it was this. And it's just because it's difficult to read. And it's not the... Maybe it is the book's fault. I don't know. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't think I'm stupid. But maybe just me and this book aren't, like, matching up. The problem I was having is that there are a lot of words that are in Hindi or Urdu. And I love learning like new words and new cultural things. And I love learning about all the new stuff that I didn't know what was. And that's cool. But there are so many of these words that like every other sentence I have to stop reading and look it up in a dictionary. And by the way, there's enough of these words that they put a glossary in the back of this book single spaced. <laughs> like there are so many words. And it's like, I can't read it because I have to go learn something every other sentence, which I don't mind doing, but it's just, it, it pulls me out of the story if I can't like read more than a sentence without having to look up a word. And then usually the definition and then the context clues aren't sufficient for me to understand what they're talking about. So then I have to go Google it and it's just like, it's like writing a research paper. So it just, it like sucked so much energy out of my soul <laughs> to try to keep reading it. And the thing is, I want to read it. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll try the audiobook. Maybe it'll make more sense if someone's reading it and I'm listening, you know? And um, don't do it. <laughs> I will say the audiobook made me not want to read the book anymore because it is literally the worst audiobook I have ever heard in my life. And I listen to a lot of audiobooks. And this one was terrible. It's literally just someone reading the book. And in audiobooks, usually the narrator is acting out the book. They're actors. They are making voices for different characters. They're putting emotion in when people are talking. This woman is just like, Fatima recoils. Don't touch me. Don't speak to me. Don't even look at me. She tells the wazir over her shoulder. That's how she reads it. It's monotone. There's no inflections. It's so bad. Who hired this narrator? It's terrible. <sighs> so yeah, there's a lot of things that all came into play here. And I just, I didn't finish it. I want to. But like, I feel like this is a book I'm going to read like little bits of here and there. <laughs> because I'll be honest, the first six chapters I read weren't great yet. The prologue was excellent. And then the book starts and I'm like... <laughs> it wasn't as good as the prologue but the prologue is very good so it makes me want to finish it but like 
I'm having a really hard time with it. So this one is kind of on the back burner until like I muster up some energy. The other book I flopped on was The Shadow Glass by Rin Chupeco. This one hurts because I effing love this series. This is the finale to the Bone Witch series. I absolutely loved the Bone Witch. I loved the Heart Forger. Those are book one and two. I loved them. And then I started reading The Shadow Glass, and honestly, I love it. It's great. The writing is amazing. The fantasy is amazing. I love everything about it. Why I stopped reading this at about 55% in is because I realized I literally can't remember anything that happened in the previous books. <laughs> It has been so long since I read them and they're so complex that I have no idea what's happening right now. I love it. It's well written and it's, and it's interesting and I love seeing everything that's happening, but I don't know what's happening. Like I don't know what's going on. And I realized, fuck, <laughs> I have to go back and reread those books because you know, like most books of a series, they have like recaps throughout the text little things like oh because this happened and then and then they start back with the story recaps this has no recaps legitimately there are zero recaps here <laughs> so i'm like oh wish they explained what they were doing because i don't know what they're doing right now i don't know why they're doing it i just know that they're doing it and it's cool but why so that's a me problem not the book's problem i really enjoy this but i had to stop reading it because i'm like i'm ruining the book for myself because I don't know what's happening. <laughs> then I was like, okay, let's go find a spoiler re like review online of the first two books and I'll read it. Are they on Wikipedia? And they're not. I tried to find them. I found everything that said spoiler review for the, like the other two books and there's not any spoiler reviews. They don't actually give spoilers. They're just very vague and I'm like, just write what happened. Who, who wrote a summary? Like, please. <laughs> please, let me know in a comment down below. Put a link if you know of a big spoilery summary for either The Bone Witch or The Heart Forger. Please give me a link so I can read it and I know what's happening again because I don't remember. As I had to put this down until I have time to either reread or re-skim the previous two books or find something very spoilery so I can re-jog my memory and remember what the heck is happening in this book because I love it, but I'm so confused. <sighs> so yeah, usually I would have read more books by now. So I only read five and a half books. <laughs> I don't really want to count Candle in the Flames. I only read like 45 pages of it. I only read 45 pages and like I couldn't get into it. Ugh. It's been a rough month. I just want to go nap. I've had such a long day at work. I ate so much food and I drank a lot of wine. Like I am, I am, I'm in it. <laughs> I'm going through it right now. Ooh. Anyway, let me know in a comment down below. Have you read any of these books? If so, which ones are your favorites? Which ones are your least favorites? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon.